Right, Dominic Cummings is truly draining the swamp. If you've been following this channel for, uh, for the past few days, especially yesterday, we talked about how uh, the head of civil service, Mark Sedville, is being fired. Uh, this is uh, something that Dominic Cummings always wanted to do, to do a bit of a shake-up uh, when it comes to the Whitehall machine, all these bureaucrats, and it's finally happening. Uh, there's been a lot of distractions recently with the Brexit negotiations and then obviously the lockdown uh, stuff, but now uh, Dominic has uh, time to uh, obviously continue with his agenda. Uh, yesterday, we talked about uh, how Mark said Bill was going. Previously, recently, we had uh, Philip Rotnam, uh, the head of uh, the Home Office, who made a move against Priti Patel. Uh, he lost the battle. He resigned. And so that was the first point because this guy was a massive obstacle in the uh, Home Office with all the, uh, obviously, the situation with Dover, with the reports that are not being published. Uh, so he's gone. Philip Rotnam uh, was the first target. Uh, Mark Sedbill, uh, obviously, uh, was yesterday's uh, victim. And uh, Sedbill is, uh, was appointed by Theresa May. And uh, again, there's been a lot of uh, clashes between uh, the government ministers, again, people like Dominic Cummings, the advisors, uh, and uh, his people, the cronies. So today we have another one who might be going, well, definitely going. Uh, we have uh, the permanent secretary uh, for the Ministry of Justice. Now, this guy's been in his job, uh, I think, for about five years now. And, uh, you know, again, he's part of the same clique, the same group. They all look the same, talk the same, and uh, they all have the same background. Uh, so the Guido Fawkes is talking about how, you know, well, I do like the, the cover picture. Another one bites the dust. Uh, so after Mark Sedwill's sooner than expected departure from Downing Street yesterday, attention is now turning uh, to the potential further mandarin uh, overhauls. Um, it, so this is uh, the guy uh, called Sir Richard uh, Heaton, and uh, his name has been floating around uh, for the past few days uh, because his contract is uh, coming up to the end uh, and uh, there's no uh, signal from the government that they want to keep him. Uh, appearing before the Public Accounts Committee this afternoon, he confirmed that his contract is up for renewal next month after five years and uh, he's, <laughs> he's claimed that it's merely speculation whether his contract will or won't, won't be renewed. Guido suspects that this is a brave public face from Sir Richard, who knows in reality that his fate is sealed. Uh, so this is the actual uh, video we have from him, uh, who talked about um, the whole, his own situation with the contract. So it's always an honor to get a front page mention in the Times, um, which, which reported that I won't be staying on. Uh, I can't quite say that. What I can say is that my tenure is for five years, like every other Perm Secretary, that comes to an end at the end of August. Um, whether or not I will continue beyond that will be the subject of an announcement, I dare say, in due course, but there hasn't been one to date. So I think we'd better regard the newspaper reports as at the moment um, uh, speculation, but uh, I'm sure there'll be news one way or the other to follow shortly. Okay. I mean, you heard it yourself, because he knows that he's not going to stay. The, the problem we have is that you have certain people who are massively statists and pro-establishment. We remember uh, former Prime Minister Theresa May. Theresa May was the one who obviously appointed uh, uh, Mark Sedbill and uh, the, the same people who always uh, were problematic <laughs> when it comes to the process. She is now angry. Earlier today in Parliament, in the Commons, uh, she was attacking Michael Gove and her own government. Well, she's a backbencher now, but she was attacking the government, uh, talking about how, uh, because said bill has now been replaced by our only favourite uh, top civil servant, um, David Frost. Well, bureaucrat, essentially, and diplomat. Um, so David Frost, who has been leading the Brexit negotiations, uh, is now going to be the new national security advisor. And... Uh, Theresa May stood up in the comments, criticised the government for this uh, political appointment. Uh, let's watch her rant and then I'm going to come back and tell the truth. I served on the National Security Council for nine years, six years as Home Secretary and three as Prime Minister. During that time, I listened to the expert, independent advice from National Security Advisers. On Saturday, my right honourable friend said, we must be able to promote those with proven expertise. Why then is the new National Security Advisor a political appointee with no proven expertise in national security? So she's 
defending, obviously, the, the same cronies in Whitehall. She said that uh, th these roles should be filled by people who have the expertise and they should be civil servants and David Frost is a political appointee. Well, let's talk about the reality. Right, so, uh, when uh, Theresa May was Home Secretary under David Cameron's government, they actually had a national security advisor who was a political appointee. Uh, that's one, and she didn't complain about that. David Frost may be a political appointee, but he does have the expertise. He has experience within national security. He um, has previously worked in the Foreign Office before all this Brexit stuff. He knows his stuff, and he knows uh, the work that he has to be doing. Uh, and uh, just because we have to go with the traditional way of uh, you know, having civil servants, has it always worked? Of course not. Again, look at people like Philip Rottenham, look at people like Mark Sedville or Sir Richard. It doesn't really work. So we do need a bit of a shake-up. So I am, in this situation, I'm completely pro-Dominic Cummings that you know, this uh, draining the swamp process actually is needed. And David Frost is a good appointment. So stop complaining. And I think Theresa May is just uh, coming up with weird excuses to just have a rant against the, the government and I think she's just having a bad day today for some reason. Uh, so because there was a Guido Fawkes were talking about earlier that it may be because there have been reports earlier today talking about how um, apparently uh, President Trump when uh, Theresa May was Prime Minister uh, was quite harsh on her over the phone, uh, like phone conversation that they had and he intimidated her uh, so I think this was her way, that's what Guido says, uh, this was her way of standing up in the Commons and showing that she is still strong and stable and she cannot be intimidated by a white male. <laughs> so this is, uh, yeah, I mean, I, 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 at the same time, I don't really care about all this because the reality is David Frost would be good. Now, Theresa May is not a big problem. The biggest problem right now we have is Sir Keir Starmer and the Labour Party. So this is uh, the same Starmer who, a couple of weeks ago, uh, kneeled in his own office, in his... <laughs> in his massive office with his best friend Angela Rayner uh, to show solidarity for people who happen to be non-white. Yeah, why not? And uh, But he came out uh, and made a U-turn uh, today or yesterday uh, in an interview. He realised that uh, the BLM organisation are quite dodgy and he's trying to now slowly kind of step back. Uh, so let's watch this interview and the reaction that uh, he's received because now the hard left are coming after the Labour leadership. That's nonsense um, and um, nobody should be um, saying anything about defunding the police. I mean, and I would have no truck with that. I was director of public prosecutions for five years. I worked with police forces across England and Wales bringing thousands of people to court. So um, my support for the police is very, very strong and evidenced in, in the actions I've, joint actions I've done with the police. But I, don't, I wouldn't have any truck uh, with what uh, the organisation was saying about defunding the police or anything else. That's just nonsense. I mean, I can't disagree with what he said. He's right. The organisation are quite dodgy. They're asking, they're demanding to defund the police. I mean, how, on earth, how on earth are you going to keep society safe? I mean, look at, you have these people, look at the sign. I mean, Look, look at the state of that photo. Um, and so they've now come out, uh, whether it's these guys or the actual hard left uh, Labour members, uh, they are going after Keir Starmer's leadership. So it's talking about how this is Daily Mail. Uh, the BLM activists say that copying an expensive suit, uh, so Keir Starmer has no right to tell us what our demands should be after he branded their call to abolish the police. Nonsense. And they continue talking about how uh, they say while black people are now in <laughs> incarcerated at the same rate as African Americans, uh, the prison population in Britain has almost doubled since the 1980s. This has affected all working class people in Britain. The expansion of police and prison power has not made our communities safer. Uh, we can no um, longer allow governments from any party to police or imprison away social problems. Social problems, I mean, the people who are in prison are criminals. You know, if you don't want to go to prison, do not commit a crime. That's simple. Nothing to do with your background or your social problems because there's a lot of people out there from working class backgrounds, including myself when I was a kid growing up in a council state in Lewisham, uh, you know, we, had, we didn't have enough, like, much money. Didn't give me an excuse to go out there and, you know, steal stuff. Uh, so, you know, if you commit a crime, 
that's that's that you go to prison. Simple. Um, you have uh, Warwick, uh, the local Labour Party in Warwick, being disgusted apparently. We are disgusted by the recent interview that Keir Starmer gave to BBC Breakfast uh, to say that defunding the police is nonsense is a slap in the face to all black academics and activists who have been working. Oh, okay, so this is the, this is literally an official Labour account from Warwick, the Labour Party. Do you remember the Labour Party? You know, the party that was you know, pro-working class but still believed in British values and uh, law and order and all that. They are <laughs> they're saying saying that the defunding of police is nonsense is a slap in the face uh, to all academics. Yeah, let's defend academics because they're very smart. <laughs> so uh, the Labour Party is uh, collapsing. Uh, there's a massive split. Uh, Keir Starmer's honeymoon period it has now ended. So good luck with that, so Keir. Um, the hard left uh, Marxists are coming out for him. And at the same time, uh, the Tories are still in government. Uh, they're, you know, some of their policies are still idiotic, but they're doing some good things with Brexit, with draining the swamp. Uh, I am going to talk about today's uh, speech and announcement that Boris Johnson made with his New Deal, his interventionist policies to spend and borrow and raise taxes. I'll do it tomorrow, not now. Uh, and uh, but yeah, I'll leave you guys with this. So you guys have less than twenty-four hours to go. If you have YouTube Premium, uh, you could uh, become a member of, uh, for the channel. Uh, you could find the link in the description or just go on youtube.com slash myitc slash join uh, for free. So if you do have YouTube Premium, uh, you could actually join us for free. Uh, you get all the benefits, the uh, members Q&A, uh, exclusive content. We do, we've got the weekly video podcast, which is a longer version of these videos. Uh, and obviously the Zoom video calls with the members. And soon, when the whole lockdown is over, we're going to start our nationwide free speech tour around the country. Uh, so do that and also don't forget to get your Defund the BBC t-shirts. The link again is in the description. Uh, we have I think about a week left uh, for this to go so make sure to get your t-shirt as soon as possible. I'm Maya Tusi. I'll see you guys tomorrow with a new video.